Hello. So in this example, we're being we're going to be doing the area under the curve, right? So in particular, we want to approximate this function, right? The x cubed plus 3x minus 1, the area under that curve um, using five rectangles on the interval 1 to 4. And in particular, uh, we want to use the right endpoint approximation method. Now, it can be sort of easy to forget, like, the formula or how the right endpoint works in terms of the whether you have to go over a width or half width or no widths for that first one. So one trick that I use personally, um, just like do a little sketch, right? a little cartoon sketch has nothing to do with the problem at all. Um, but I think to myself, okay, I want to do, you know, some number of rectangles, right? Like I want to do three rectangles between these using the right endpoint. So that means I want something like, you know, this rectangle, that rectangle, and that rectangle. But this shows me that my height then is that one width over, right? So my, my first rectangle isn't going to be happening at my first x value. It's going to be happening one width over. So this is one of the ways I sort of keep that in my head. All right. Nonetheless, uh, all sort of Riemann approximations um, are sort of fundamentally the same, except for right the, the height value you need to choose, right? So that's why all the formulas look annoyingly similar to the point that they're really easy to mix up if you just memorize them. So first thing I'm going to do is figure out what that width is, right? So I have the interval 4 to 1, so my width of each one is that 4 minus 1 divided by the number of rectangles I want, which is 5. So it's 3 fifths. Okay. And I know that uh, I have my function, right, my f of x. So I guess I'll write down, right, just to be clear, my f of x is my x cubed plus 3x minus 1. So then I know I'm going to have some kind of, right, Riemann approximation, my, my sigma notation something. And I'm going to have some number of widths. So I'll have that there in a second. Then my uh, actual formula, right, is just the sum of the areas, right? So it's the, maybe I'll just write this out, my area of my rectangles, right? Which, again, is some n going from something to something. We'll figure that out in a second. But the area is width times height, right? So this is width times height. Well, my width I already figured out, right? So that's three-fifths for each of them. And then my height is going to be that f of something, where my little cartoon tells me, right, that I want to start one width over. So it's going to be wherever my starting value is, which, right, is, is one. So it's going to be one plus however many widths over I've gone, where my width is, again, three-fifths. Okay. But now I can tell, okay, my n needs to start, well, if I made it zero, I'd, I'd be doing f of one here, and that's not what I want, right? I want one width over as my first, my first starting spot. So I want one width over, so I want my n to be one to start with, right? And I need to do five rectangles. So I need to have one, two, three, four, five rectangles. So I want n to go from one to five, right? Which again, if we're not used to how the sigma notation works, we did five minus one, we get four. We might think that's four rectangles, but it's not, right? Because we include both ends. That's why I will literally sometimes count it on my fingers to be like, I did that right, right? Yeah, I did that right, okay. <laughs> so. Notice that, like, I didn't try to memorize a formula here. Like, I didn't, I wasn't like, okay, the formula is sigma from its right endpoint, so it's going to start at 1 and go to, right, and blah, 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 blah. I just sort of wrote out, right, the geometry of it. I was like, okay, I know I'm adding some stuff. I'm going to need an index. I'll figure that part out later. But I know I'm, add I'm adding up areas of rectangles. It's literally what a Riemann approximation is. But an area of a rectangle is width times height. Okay, well, I know my width. That's, that's the thing I had to divide out. And then my height, I use the, 
you know, drawing that literally had nothing to do with the problem. It was just like a toy to tell me like, okay, I want to make sure that I start one over as my first part. So where I started plus n is one. Ah, okay, n is one, right? And then and then go. So this is sort of a nice sort of systematic way of, of figuring this out no matter which uh, approximation method you're going to do. It's always sort of the same thing. The only sort of difference is the, the sort of toy sketch over here telling me whether I want to start one width over or no widths over or half a width over or whatever, right? Okay, so now I want to calculate this thing. Okay, well, I can write out what the, what the sigma actually is sort of literally doing, right? So I'm going to just write out the actual sigma notation part. So that's plugging in one first. So I'm going to have three-fifths times f of one plus one times three-fifths plus three-fifths times f of one plus two times three-fifths right, because I'm increasing my n by 1, uh, plus 3 fifths times f of 1 plus 3 times 3 fifths, plus 3 fifths times f of 1 plus 4 times 3 fifths, plus 3 fifths times f of 1 plus 5 times 3 fifths. Okay, so that's just doing the sigma notation piece, right? And now I'm going to sort of clean this up a little and actually like write out what these numbers inside are. So what I want then, um, I'm going to notice I have a 3 fifths in front of everything, which is not surprising, so I'm just going to pull that out to the front. So I'm going to say, okay, this is 3 fifths times, and then I'll have all of these things written out. So I'm going to have f of 1 plus 3 fifths is 8 fifths. Then uh, f of 1 plus 2 times 3 fifths, that's 6 fifths, that's 11 fifths. f of 11 fifths. f of 3, so that's 9 fifths plus 5 is 14 fifths. of 4 is 12 plus 5 is 17 fifths. And the fives cancel, so this is just f of 4. And now we see, right, like the 3 fifths would distribute to each of them, so I'm just factoring it out is what I did there. Okay, so far so good. Now, quote unquote, all I have to do is calculate this mess. So. 3 fifths times, so 8, f of 8 fifths, so that's going to be 8 fifths cubed plus 3 times 8 fifths minus 1. So this was just, I mean, obviously you don't have to write this in your own work. I'm just doing this to make sure everybody's following. This is the f of 8 fifths. Right. I guess I don't need my toy example anymore, so I'll get rid of that. Okay. So 11 fifths is next, so 11 over 5 cubed plus 3 times 11 over 5 minus 1 plus, and then 14 fifths cubed uh, plus 3 times 14 fifths minus 1 plus 17 fifths cubed plus 3 times 17 fifths Uh, minus 1 plus uh, 4 cubed plus 3 times 4 minus 1. Okay. So all I've done is just 
right, apply the function in each case. Uh, oops, forgot my close break, close uh, bracket there. Okay, now in the interest of time, I'm not gonna actually go through and calculate each of these because I feel confident that whatever problems that you're gonna have to do will either be relatively nice, like the four, right? They won't give you like crazy fractions to crazy large powers, um, or you'll have a calculator depending on who's teaching the class and whatever's going on with that. Um, but generally speaking, point being that um, you don't have to, like this is just the number crunching part. I'm, I'm hoping that's self-explanatory, was getting to this point that is, that is the question. So I would sort of equals dot 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 profit. <laughs> so number crunch, get a value, that's your estimate, okay? So again, like I didn't try to memorize the formula or anything. I drew a little toy example to tell me where n started and how sort of whether I wanted one width or not, but this is still just right area of a rectangle, width times height, and put it together, okay? So that's that. Hello. So in this video, in this uh, example, we are doing a Riemann approximation. So we have our function 2x squared plus 3x minus 5. Uh, we're going to use six rectangles, our interval 2 to 7, and we're using the right endpoint Riemann approximation. So again, uh, so I'm going to start with just sort of beginning the process, right? Trying to remember or more accurately sort of recreate uh, the formula because I my memory is worse than a goldfish, which is technically a misnomer. Goldfish actually has pretty decent memory, but eh, it's an idiom by now. <laughs> so, uh, right, our, our initial thing, this idea, so we have our sigma, we have some index, which we're going to call n, uh, and we want this to be the width times the height, right? And this sort of motivates me to go over here and draw my little cartoon. If you remember which way the uh, the right endpoint works, so again, I'm just gonna sort of put in, say, okay, I'm gonna do three sort of rectangles. If I'm gonna do a right endpoint, that means that it's gonna go from here over, from there over, and from here over. But importantly, that means the height of the first one is one width over. That looks like a psi whatever, one width over, right, from the starting spot. So I can get my height by doing sort of exactly what you would think, right? So I'm gonna take the, the, full, uh, the full width of the interval, which is that uh, seven minus two, and divide it by however many rectangles we're using. So we're using six. So this is gonna be five sixth. So I'm gonna have the sum, my width is 5 sixths. And then my height, right, is always this f of thing. And in particular, right, I'm gonna start with the starting value of the interval, which is in this case two. And then I'm gonna move however many widths over I need. So I'm gonna have, right, this is, n is an index, so I'm gonna move over some n number of widths, 5 sixths. And according to my cartoon, my first sort of height needs to be one width over. So that means that my first sort of rectangle, my height, needs to be two plus one times five sixths. So that tells me n starts at one. And if I'm adding six things together, uh, if I wrote six here, then I would do one to six. That would be six minus one is five plus one more because it's always one higher. Um, so that'd be six things. So indeed, it's going to be a six up here. Okay, so this is my formula, right? Just recreating from that idea of, of rectangles and areas. So now I'm going to expand out the sigma notation. So I'll keep it in green for now. So I'll plug in one initially. Uh, same deal, I'm gonna factor out that five six to start with. So I'm gonna have f of two plus one times five sixths plus f of two plus two times five sixths plus f of two plus three times five sixths plus 
plus f of 2 plus what, 4 times 5 sixths plus f of 2 plus 5 times 5 sixths almost there plus f times 2 plus 6 times 5 sixths okay and again i factored the f 5 6 out so it would multiply against all of these that's why i didn't write it all of those times now i'm going to clean this up a little so this is 5 6 times f of so 2 plus 5 6 that's going to be what 17 6 then f of 2 times let's see it's 5 thirds so that's going to be f of uh, 11 thirds. 3, so that's 5 halves plus 2, so that's going to be 9 halves. Just simplifying these as we go. Um, so this is going to be 2 times 5 thirds, so that's going to be 10 thirds, so that's going to be 16 thirds. That's just terrible, so that's going to be f of 2 times 25, so 37 sixths. And that cancels out nicely, so this is f of 7. Okay. So that is all of it sort of simplified down, but now we're at the point where we need to use the function, right? So again, I would... If you were doing this sort of in practice, I would sort of calculate each of these off to the side, figure out what they are, and then plug them in. Um, but for the sake of sort of seeing what's happening, I'm just going to go ahead and write it out uh, for you guys here. Um, but I'm not going to sort of crunch all the numbers at the end because that's hopefully something you guys can do without too much trouble. So 5 sixths times... So now I want f of 17 sixths, so that's going to be 2 times 17 sixths squared plus 3 times 17 sixths minus 5. So that's the first one. Plus, so now I'm going to do 11 thirds. So this is, um, let me, sorry. I'm just too much of a perfectionist sometimes. So uh, two times, so now I'm doing 11 thirds. So I'm gonna have 11 thirds squared plus three times 11 thirds minus five. Plus now I'm doing nine halves. So two times nine halves squared plus three times nine halves minus five. 16 thirds, so 2 times 16 thirds squared plus 3 times 16 thirds minus 5 plus 37 sixths, 37 sixths squared plus 3 times 37 sixths minus 5, and finally 7. So 2 times 7 squared plus 3 times 7 minus 5, and that's the end. Okay. So again, it, it would probably be safer and easier um, for you to sort of just do out each of these pieces, or well, really each of these pieces off as its own sort of thing on the side, and then you can sort of plug them in. But I did it out so you can see sort of the whole process. And Again, I'm going to leave the <laughs> number crunching part up to you guys because I'm assuming at least that that's the, that's the easy part. So that's that. Hello. So in this example, doing another Riemann approximation. Um, so depending on the order you're watching these examples in, you may notice that this is actually sort of almost identical to one of the other example videos. Uh, it's the same setup, right? The same function, uh, x cubed plus 3x minus 1, using the same number of rectangles, five rectangles over the same interval, 1 to 4. But now we're going to use the left endpoint rather than the right endpoint, which is what the other video used. So 
these, this work should look very similar, but sort of importantly not quite the same, right? And that's sort of the tricky part is that it's very easy to confuse the two. So we want to sort of make a note of where the differences are. Nonetheless, I'm going to sort of start out the same way. So um, I'm going to sort of make sure I record my function so I don't forget. So uh, let's see, it's going to be f of x is x cubed plus 3x minus 1. And I need to calculate the width of the rectangles, right? I'm going to lay out some rectangles. And again, I'm going to like do a little cartoon sketch over here, right? It has nothing to do with the question in terms of like the function. This is not what that function necessarily looks like. But I'm doing it just as a way of sort of remembering, okay, if I'm going to go from some, you know, between two points, now I want the left end point. So that means that my rectangle, right, if I'm doing this, if I were doing, say, three rectangles, it would look like this, and then over, and then sort of over like that. But importantly, that means that my starting value is where the actual interval starts as opposed to, you know, some number like one width over, or half width over, or something as my first uh, y value, right? And then I'm going to again write out, right, my sigma notation. I'm going to have n as an index. It starts somewhere, it goes somewhere, and it's going to be some width times height of the relevant rectangles, right? Uh, I don't know where n is starting and ending yet. I'll get to that, right? And that's not a thing I'm going to worry about just yet. My width, right? I know how to get that. So my width. Well, that's the total width, right? The on the interval four minus one, chopped up into how many rectangles? Well, there's five rectangles. So that means my width is three fifths. So that tells me that I'm going to have the sum. My width is 3 fifths. Right, I'll keep with the coloring. And I know my height is going to be f of something. And in fact, it's always f of the starting value of the interval, right? So my interval starts at 1 plus n number of widths that I need to move over. So n times the, the width, 3 fifths. And now I need to know where my n starts and where it ends. This is where my little cartoon comes into play, right? So I noted, okay, if I'm doing a left end point, that means I'm not moving over any. So I'm going to start at the actual honest start of the interval. So that means that I want to start at 1 and move no widths over, right? Because my first value was at the start, and I didn't move any widths over to get the height of the first rectangle. So that means I want this to be no widths, so n is going to start at 0. And then I need five rectangles, so I could count up 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's <laughs> zero, one, two, three, four. There we go, that's five. <laughs> so n ends at four. Um, or you can just think of it as basically, you know, the, the difference is one bigger than it looks. So four minus zero is four, one more than that, five. There's five things there. Regardless, now I have my formula, right? Again, I didn't, I didn't memorize this formula. I didn't write it out and fill in the blanks or anything. I just sort of redeveloped it remembering the geometry, right? Just width times height of a rectangle. That was, that was all the memorizing I needed, that and the fact that I am doing heights using f, right? So now I'm actually going to calculate this by calculating it, right? I'm going to plug in the, the relevant n values and then get the sort of simplified version from there. So I'm going to start by just doing the sigma notation bit. So I'm going to plug in n equals 0. So I'm going to get 3 fifths times f of 1 plus 0 times 3 fifths plus 3 fifths times f of. So this is when n was 0. So then I increase it by 1. So now n is 1. So that's 1 times 3 fifths plus 3 fifths times f of 1 plus 
2 times 3 fifths plus 3 fifths times f of 1 plus 3 times 3 fifths plus 3 fifths times f of 1 plus 4 times 3 fifths. Now that I've reached right my, my end, I can stop. And then again, if I'm not confident right that I'm adding the right number of rectangles, I can just look right. I have one, two, three, four, five, five rectangles. I'm good. As a side note, uh, you often see this formula if you sort of look up the formula or you sort of develop it all the way through. Um, you might see that the three fifths is sort of always factored out, which does give a cleaner equation to memorize. But as I keep harping on, I'm not big on memorizing, right? So I keep it inside because it helps me just remember the geometry. And then I usually factor it out either before going from here to here or in the next step. Um, so just as a note, if you're like, why are you doing this harder formula? It's because it's easier to sort of recreate and then you can always sort of factor it out at this step rather than trying to memorize a formula that has it factored out already. Regardless, my next step is to simplify all this stuff. So this equals, so now I'm going to factor out that three fifths. So f plus zero, so that's f of one, right? One plus zero times three fifths plus f of one plus three fifths, that's eight fifths plus f of one plus six fifths, that's 11 fifths, plus f of one plus nine fifths, that's 14 fifths, plus f of one plus 12 fifths, so that's gonna be 17 fifths. Okay. So now I have Sort of got my nice clean version of this thing. So now I'm down to just applying the actual function, right? So I'm gonna get three fifths times, so f of one, so I plug in one, one cubed uh, plus three times one minus one plus, now it's eight fifths, so it's eight fifths cubed plus three times eight fifths minus one plus now 11 fifths, so 11 fifths cubed plus three times 11 fifths minus one plus 14 fifths, so 14 fifths cubed plus three times 14 fifths uh, minus one plus and 17 fifths. So 17 fifths cubed plus three times 17 fifths minus one. And that is everything. All right. So again, I'm not going to worry about going through all the number crunching because hopefully I'm I'm assuming that that part's not so bad for you guys. You can go through the actual number crunching part of it. It's getting to that point that is the, the hard part. But again, just to look at, right, I didn't, um, I didn't memorize stuff. I just used the geometry again, remembering the rectangles, area of a rectangle is width times height, figured out the width, right, the total length divided by how many pieces you're chopping it into because you make them all the same width. The height is f, so it's f of whatever the starting point is plus however many widths you need to move over, so it's one plus n times three fifths. But then I need to know how many widths I need to start over as uh, start with when I move over for that first one. So I used a cartoon and I was like, ah, okay, I, I want the very first thing. So I want zero widths over for that first rectangle. And then sort of wrote out the sigma notation, right? Like expanded it out and then sort of simplified and then applied f to all of the places, okay? As a side note, it is sometimes easier to just sort of off on like scratch work or something, calculate each of these on their own instead of having it sort of all written out. Obviously, I want to write it all out so that you guys can see what I've done. 
Um, but in practice, right, like if the equation is long and whatnot, then it can become sort of really messy writing everything out in line. So it's sometimes easier to just sort of off to the side, be like, all right, what is f of one equal? And calculate all the way down and be like, f of one is seven, and then you, you know, replace it with whatever the number is, and so on, right? Okay, so that is that. Hello, so in this example, we're finding the area under the curve, right, using Riemann approximation of uh, this function, x cubed plus three x minus one, which again, depending on the order, you probably have seen this once, maybe twice, uh, with right and left endpoints. Same setup here, right? Five rectangles, same function, x cubed plus three x minus one, same interval, one to four, but now we're using the midpoint Riemann approximation, okay? So I'm gonna do the same process. So start with finding my sum. So I'm gonna have my n as my index starting somewhere or going somewhere. Again, I'll figure that out. Uh, I'm gonna have the width times height of my rectangle. My width, right, I can find that by doing the sort of normal thing that one would do. So I'm gonna take the, the total width, four minus one, divide it in evenly among however many rectangles, five. So my width is going to be three fifths. To figure out the height, I'm gonna use my you know, standard sort of cartoon trick. So again, I'm gonna, this has nothing necessarily to do with the actual function, um, but I'm just sort of trying to figure out how I'm gonna do the widths of the rectangles. So if I'm gonna break this up into three rectangles, I want to get the height of the rectangle by looking at the middle, right? Because this is the midpoint. So it's gonna look something like that. But importantly, that means that I need to move now one half width over. And this is a little trickier than normal because half widths, usually it was like, okay, how many widths are I go over and I kind of adjust n to make that work, but I can't make n into a, a fraction, right? I have to make, I have to keep it as a, a whole number or an integer to be specific. So I know I'm gonna have n going from somewhere to somewhere. I'm gonna have three fifths for my width. And then I'm gonna have f of my starting value, right, the, the one, plus however many widths over I move. So that's gonna be n times 3 fifths, because I'm trying to move however many widths, right, if I'm gonna go from this part to that part, this is one width over. So I still move a full width at a time uh, when I iterate the thing. So I'm still wanting n times 3 fifths, but now I have to be careful because I need to start at one half a width over. So I'm gonna start with, I'm gonna have the starting spot, n times 3 fifths, this is my whole width that I'm iterating, but I still need to figure out my starting value, meaning I'm going to add half of a width as my sort of way of starting. And this way, if I think of it as, you know, starting with um, where I need to start n at, right? I have one as my starting value plus a half a width. So I'm starting at sort of the starting spot plus a half a width, which means I don't wanna move any more widths over. So I want my n to start at zero, right? Because when n is zero this term, right? It becomes zero times three fifths, that'll go away which means I have my starting value and half of a width over as my starting y value, which is how I get that middle piece, okay? And my n is gonna go to four, right? Because I'm gonna have zero, one, two, three, four. There we go, four. So that's gonna have a five rectangles of adding together, which is what I wanted, right? So I now have my sort of formula developed so now I'm going to expand out the um, actual sort of sigma notation bit. So uh, I'm going to factor out the three-fifths first. 
And then I just have this thing getting added together as I move n up. So it starts at 0. So I'm going to have f of 1 plus 0 times 3 fifths uh, plus 1 half times 3 fifths plus. So that's where n was 0. So now I'm going to increase n by 1. So I have f of 1 plus 1 times 3 fifths plus 1 half times 3 fifths. And increase n again, so f of 1 plus 2 times 3 fifths plus 1 half times 3 fifths. And increase n again, so I'm going to have 1 plus 3 times 3 fifths plus 1 half times 3 fifths. And finally, last one, 1 plus 4 times 3 fifths plus 1 half times 3 fifths. And again, write the 3, fi the three fifths here, which was the width, is multiplying everything. I've just pulled it out. OK. So now I'm going to clean up all of the inside terms. Switch to green, give a little life to this thing. <laughs> so I'm going to have 3 fifths times f of 1 plus half. So that's going to be 3 tenths plus 1 is going to be 13 tenths. Then f of 1 plus 3 tenths is 13 tenths plus 3 fifths, which is another 6 tenths. That's going to be 19 tenths. Um, next one is going to be f of 25 tenths, which I could simplify if I wanted. Um, I guess that would be 5 halves. Plus f of 31 tenths plus f of 37 tenths. Okay. Uh, so let's see. Did I do that right? Yes. Okay. So then I would take these uh, values, right? So I've, I've sort of expanded everything, cleaned everything up. So now all that's left is to apply f, right? So again, it would sort of probably be easier in practice uh, if you're doing this, you know, on your own to just on side, like on the side somewhere, calculate f of 13 tenths, calculate f of 19 tenths, calculate f of 25, five, 25 tenths or 5 halves right, just off to the side, and then plug those values in here rather than what I'm about to do, but I just want to show you, right, what we're doing. So I would take f and apply it to 13 tenths. So 3 fifths times, so this is going to be 13 tenths cubed plus 3 times 13 tenths minus 1 plus 19 tenths cubed uh, plus 3 times 19. Oops. I think with how many times I've written this, I'd be all set, but you'd be wrong. <laughs> 19 tenths minus 1 plus uh, 20 fifths. So that's going to be 5 halves cubed plus 3 times 5 halves minus 1 plus 31 tenths cubed plus 3 times 31 tenths minus 1 plus and 37 tenths. So 37 tenths cubed plus 3 times 37 tenths minus 1. Done. Okay. And again, I'm going to leave the number crunching up to you guys because, um, again, that should be hopefully straightforward by the time you're in calculus. Uh, but as I said, it would be easier to sort of write all that stuff sort of piece by piece to the side so you don't get all of the stuff sort of crunching in like that. But otherwise, that's pretty much all. I mean, the only tricky part here is figuring out how to, how to deal with that one half, right? And the key is that we can't do it with the index directly because the index has to be a whole number. Right? It has to be an integer. So I can't have like n being one half over here. So I had to think of doing the same like plus one width over, right, n widths over as I as I go from rectangle to rectangle, 
but I have to start half a width away from the starting value of the interval. Okay, so that's that.